Good morning, my name is Charlie Foxtrot and I want to welcome you to the Charlie Foxtrot Military Veteran and Resource Show. Today we are in Williamstown, Kentucky at the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery North where we're going to meet with Executive Director Kathy Taylor. Uh, she has some exciting news. They were recently just got a, a huge rating, one of the tops in the nation, and they just do a remarkable, wonderful job here. So we're excited to sit down with Kathy here in just a few moments. Thanks for uh, watching. Oh, hey. How you doing? My name is Charlie Foxtrot and I want to welcome you to the Charlie Foxtrot Military Veteran and Family Resource Show. I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for tuning in. Well, welcome everybody. It's Charlie Foxtrot and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Military Veteran and Family Resource Show. I'm here with the wonderful Miss Kathy Taylor, the Executive Director here at the Williamstown Veterans North cemetery so thank you for joining us today Kathy thank you and uh, can you just start us off by telling us a little about your background and how you kind of came around to being part of the Veterans North Cemetery okay um, my husband is a retired reservist uh, with 29 years Wow yeah. and um, we basically knew the the cemetery was going was being built mm -hmm. so I came to a little uh, trailer on the grounds when they was building it and talked to Mr. Duncan and we had to of course go on the website and fill out an application and all that kind of stuff but I, I pretty well knew a lot about the military because he was a command sergeant major oh okay yeah um, so he was army was that correct was, okay know, yeah he was army reserves mm -hmm. okay and um, being a I mean, I was married to him during Desert Storm, mm -hmm. so I had a little bit of military background. Um, and so I put in for it, and luckily I was a, selected to be the admin specialist. Mr. Duncan was the director, mm -hmm. and I have, well, been the director for, or the admin specialist for 11 years. Oh, wow. So... I was here when it started in August of 2008. So it's good to say that you know the operation very well. Yes. You've been yes. here since the yes. very beginning. When did the cemetery actually open up then? In, in August of 2008. In 2008, okay. Yes. Yeah. It was, I think Mr. Duncan got here in 07, sometime, okay. 2007. And he was actually here for the building and laying of all the lines and the buildings and everything. Um, and in May of 2008 is when I was hired. So I was here a little bit before it was dedicated to get things established and the people pre-registered and all that kind of stuff. 29 years of being really a, a military spouse and dependent and supporter uh, right. of your husband. You know what it's all about. Right, yeah. right. And with him being in Desert Storm, I was the president of the family resource. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was the president of that. So that that helped, um, just and I have in, always thought the military was very supportive. I've always been a supporter of them. I have a father that was in the United States Navy during World War II. Oh wow! Um, and then a son that was in joined the Marines in 2000. Of course, of course, he was in Operation or the Iraqi Freedom. Okay. And then my other, another son was joined in 2003. So your 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 blood is all about the, yes. their service. You yes. got a lot of yes. experience. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I've just always supported our military. That's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about what the role is here at the cemetery, and uh, you know, why should people reach out and contact you about being part of this? Because I think it is a very dignified way of laying our veterans and spouses mm -hmm. to rest. Um, it is very, well, they get a plot, a um, concrete grave liner if they're traditionally buried, meaning casketed. Mm -hmm. um, they get a headstone, the opening and closing, and then the perpetual care of the cemetery is all free for the veteran. Yeah, and that's such a huge uh, benefit that they're entitled to if they qualify for that. Well, every, I mean, you don't have to have served in a war. Mm -hmm. It's whether you have served our country or not. Yeah. And uh, that is the most important thing. I mean, a clerk is, to me, is just as valuable as somebody out here 
on the front lines. Absolutely. Because somebody has to be the clerk and somebody has to feed those soldiers and supply them with the uh, uniforms and the supply sergeants. and They're all important. Right. right. It's a total team effort, right? right. And so that's why it's so, uh, such a great benefit here. And I'm uh, use the words carefully because I, I don't know if fortunate is not the right word, but I was um, um, had the, the luxury, I guess. My dad was an Air Force veteran. He's actually laid to rest here. Okay. And um, it, it was such a beautiful and moving um, ceremony. Just everything that you guys do to support the family and the, the veteran. And, and I think you Nate, said something that's very important because a lot of people didn't don't know, and I didn't know until I went through it, was that spouses are actually entitled to be at place rest here as well. Yes. When they are, well, I don't want to say charged, but mm -hmm. their fee to be buried here with their husbands is $500 at the present time. And since they have opened, we have opened, it has gone up two times, okay. which was still at $500 is very reasonable. It's still very reasonable. Because you still have your, you know, you're, you're right there with your veteran. Mm -hmm. Um, and to me, it's just a very nice benefit. Absolutely. And if you have also handicapped children, oh, okay. can be buried with the family if they are solely dependent upon their, you know, the husband and the family for support, um, or minor children. <laughs>
maps of the cemetery grounds were and a map of the section where their loved one is buried. Mm -hmm. um, then the floral regulations, which we allow fresh cut flowers when it's mowing season. And uh, then artificial after Veterans Day and bef then through March. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, is we allow, you know, artificial flowers. Um, and then the Presidential Memorial Certificate, which once it is completed in our system, and that is the National Burial, Burial, Burial Operations Support System, um, then it is automatically generated, this Presidential Memorial Certificate. And, but they are so backed up in Washington that it takes six months for them to get even, even receive them. Right, yeah. But that's all given to the next of kin the day of the service. And of course our headstone monuments is uh, the proof. We ask that they get it back to us within five business days. Okay. But that is a very important part of, that, of, of us receiving that headstone proof so that we can put families' personal inscriptions on there and mm -hmm. religious emblems. Well, and another great point is, um, you, you, like you mentioned before, the veterans entitled to this. They've earned this through their service time. Yes. And, but it also includes um, um, a tombstone. Uh, but I, what I did realize is that you could personally... Uh, put what the information is you want on. I'm guessing there's some limitation to there what it is. is. Of course, the, the name of the veteran, and we usually put their rank and branch of service, and date of birth and date of death, and the war period that they served in. Whether, it, whether they served in Vietnam or not, or, you know, we're here in the States. If they served during that war period time, then Vietnam is placed on there. And... Um, you mentioned this earlier, but it's absolutely free for the veterans. Yes. There is a small cost. Uh, at this time, it's about $500 for any dependent that might be eligible or, uh, of course, the spouse that could also be eligible for that. Right. So is there any pre-registration that they can do? Uh, how are you guys as far as room? I know, like, uh, Arlington, the big story this last two months has been that they're running out of room. How does it look here? We have got 99 acres. Okay. Huge a, area. A huge area. Mm -hmm. um, what we have developed at this point is not 26 acres. Okay. So we've got two more phases after this one is wow. filling up. Mm -hmm. You know, we of course we won't start the second phase until this one is pretty well full. Um, and then, like I said, the two more phases are our back ridges and they are beautiful. So plenty of room, plenty of space. Right. Um, can a veteran, if they uh, want to get ahead of the game, and I recommend that they always do that, get right. ahead of it, um, how do they go about doing that? Do okay. they reach out to you? Or? We have a application on our website. Okay, and I'll put the website information on the line. And um, they can fill out that the first, you know, the pre-eligibility application, which supplies their name and. Um, the spouse's name and social security number, birth date, and an address mm -hmm. where they're living presently, and then supply a copy of their discharge, 214, DD 214. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you bring up an interesting question I think I have. Do you have to be a state resident since it's a state cemetery? You have to have a connection. Okay. A connection to Kentucky, whether it be, you know, your social security number is a four zero, Mm -hmm. which most Kentuckys are. Mm -hmm. I think some of the newer babies are different. But, right. um, or you, on the, you've had to have served in one of our military installations here in Kentucky, Fort Campbell, Fort Knox. Um, anything on there, you was born in Kentucky, um, you live in Kentucky, you have paid taxes in Kentucky. We typically try to find a connection Gotcha. But um, there are, and I think legislation is trying to be um, initiated to where it's with going to be within 50 miles of the state line. Mm. So that will help too. Okay. But yes, there has to be a Kentucky connection. connection. Okay. And uh, you said just go to your website, you can download the form, fill that out. And I know on that form, it gives, you can mail it directly to you. Yes. Okay. Yes, there and are, your there are five addresses at the bottom which Kentucky now has five state veteran cemeteries, and they're all listed at the bottom, and you just want to check north.
And like I said, if you haven't been out here, um, I, I recommend that you stop by, talk to the staff, and just get a feel for the environment that's here and see the beautiful grounds. And I'll show some pictures of what's what it looks like in as well, but it's just absolutely beautiful down here. And I, and I do want to give a shout out for our other staff members because without all of us, this would not be as beautiful as it is. Absolutely. Um, and we have Elizabeth King, who is our present admin specialist. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chris Hammonds, who is our superintendent on the grounds. Mm -hmm. Then we have Jerry Morse, who is a caretaker. Devin Hurley, who is a caretaker. And then we have a temporary caretaker, Roger Sturdivant. Wow. For as many acres that you have and what you do, such a small staff to get it all. It God, is, please. It is. And they work yeah. hard. Yeah. You know, but it but it takes a village. It does. A community of working together, right? It does. And I'm sure um, that it takes other agencies outside of even yours that you probably work closely with, like funeral homes. And yes. Um, I took a shot of the flags earlier, but I know you have a close connection with Operation Honor that provides. Yes. Uh, um, burial flag cases and some other things. So. Right, right. So. But, and getting this inspection ready for the inspection, we worked extra hard in doing outside things and cleaning and making sure everything was pristine right. for the National Cemeteries because we were all, we really did not know what to expect because we had not had one prior ah. to that. Not a big one like we were mm -hmm. under the gun. But, um, we, I think the guys do them a wonderful job. Proof is in the pudding, right? Or at right. least in the score in this right. case. You we, guys are, we are very proud of that. And absolutely should be. And that's great. Do you, when do we find out about the uh, um, next level? I would, I would say it's not until the end of the year because okay. this is a yearly thing. Gotcha. So it would be the 2019. So it would have to be from calendar year. Absolutely. And you mentioned earlier that you have a website. Do you have any other social media activity that people can follow you to track and monitor? Yeah, we have Facebook. Okay. We have a Facebook site, which which Liz basically keeps it updated gotcha. as to when we have indigent burials. And we, we hope that people, we're trying to make sure that we have more um, op, or people come for those mm -hmm. instead of, of a we don't want a veteran to have to be laid to rest with no one here. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're we're trying very hard to keep that updated. Yeah, so definitely make sure you follow them on Facebook and keep track and monitor. And like I said, come down and visit this beautiful location. It's right here in Williamstown, Kentucky. Yes. It's not that far. Um, I'm a Northern Kentucky guy, <laughs> so it's the, you know 30 minutes from my house in Independence, and uh, it's not that far from Lexington. And Everybody thinks that we are way, way out off the beaten path, but right. we are not. Yeah, and you're actually right off the the expressway as well, yes. so it's easy access, easy to get to, um, and like I said, it's just a beautiful, beautiful grounds. And we do have a yearly service, uh, a Memorial Day service here, ceremony here on Memorial Day. Um, we have, at first we did also have a Veterans Day program, but a lot of our local communities wanted to have their own individual yeah. services. And Veterans Day is about the living veteran mm -hmm. versus the deceased. Mm -hmm. um, so we basically have elected to give that one up, but we still place flags in front of each headstone as we do Memorial Day and then at, at Christmas time we have wreaths KVC and veterans where we place a wreath on each grave site. Yeah and if you've never seen that ceremony every one of them is absolutely wonderful. They get you right here and right here right, in your heart. Right. Because, um, again it's just a wonderful job that's done and, and I'll make sure to put some pictures up and, and okay. uh, some contact information but if, if anybody has questions immediately how they reach out to you. They can call okay. at 859-823-0720, or you can always um, email me at Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y, dot Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, at K-Y dot gov. Awesome. Again, a beautiful location, a wonderful place, amazing staff, proof in the pudding. They uh, just received a uh, 96 rating out of the national accreditation for cemeteries, and uh, it's just an absolutely wonderful place. Uh, to come and visit and encourage you to pre-register if possible. Is there anything else that we should let the let the community know about? 
We are here to serve the veterans and their families. And you do an absolute amazing and wonderful job. Well, thank you, Kathy. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you. Thank you.